was broken with blinded eyes I was caught up in the chains of darkness Fragile heart meant to die Till Lord found me and saved my life Never lost cause I knew I'd take refuge where away oh lord remind me of your promises the love and goodness you've declared i am still holding on you're rushing in Good morning, everyone. Let's all stand as we ready our hearts to worship the one true God. I want to read to you Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. But before that, take note that the one that is being described here is none other than Jesus Christ. Sabinito, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 
For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together, and He is the head of the body, the church, which is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is in everything, He might be preeminent. Pag sinabi po nating preeminent, ibig sabihin kataas-taasan, walang pumapangalawa. At I, I just want you to know that what who we are worshiping at this moment is that God. So I pray that yes, we all have our concerns, we all have our worries and side. So kung ano man yung daladala mo ngayon, let's set that aside for now and let's look at Jesus for He is the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen? Can we just pray right now, Lord? Today, we choose to worship you. We choose to look to you. And Lord, would you help us draw us near to you, Lord God, as we continue to look to you as a community. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praises, I'll scream. 
want to praise you today, God. We want to lift your holy name. We acknowledge that you are here, God. You're working. You are the center of this church, God. Reign above all. hearts without your grace. Light us up to see your goodness. To Test. 
church. Let our hearts reflect your light with our lives to testify that you burn brighter. So we burn brighter. We will never be the same for the glory of your name. Lord, sa kung ano yung mga nangyayari or yung mga situations namin. But we would only look to your presence, God. This is our prayer today, Lord. Right here in this place, we want nothing more than to be
Can we all close our eyes for a moment? I believe that the Holy Spirit is here and He wants to minister to, to all of us. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says here, this is Jesus speaking. Sabi ni Jesus, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I sense that many of us in this place right now may not be physically tired, but we have a weary soul. Maybe because of the challenges that we're going to the things that that weighs us down, the worries, the anxieties, the fear. Or maybe it's a relational challenge, a financial challenge, whatever it is that weighs down your soul. Yung masyado mabigat that it affects how you come to God. I, I just want to encourage you today to continue to come to Jesus. Jesus will not be intimidated by the things that you carry. Jesus will not be intimidated Dun sa kung ano man yung dala-dala natin, just lift it all up to God right now and allow Him to minister to you. Sabi dun sa verse na binasa natin, take my yoke. Pag sinabi natin yoke, ito yung ano eh, yung kapag may dalawang domestic animal, o either a cow or a bull, tap, pinagtatabi nilalagyan ng yoke, sabi nila na multiply daw yung effort kapag may synergy na kahit ang strength ng isa, 8, kapag ka dinagdag mo dun sa isa na ang strength ay 8, hindi 16. Sabi nila, kaya para mag-even hanggang 32. Can you imagine? Na no, imagine mo, pag sinabi ni Jesus, take my yoke, na yung pu-partner sa'yo, si Jesus mismo. <laughs> Can you imagine what we could do with that? No wonder the Apostle Paul can say, through Christ, I can do everything. Can we all just pray right now, close our eyes, bow our heads. If you're that person, you know that you have a weary soul. Whatever that is, whatever it is that weighs you down, I want to pray for you right now. Can you raise up your hand if that's you? Just want to minister to you. Yes, yes, yes. So many hands are raised. As we lift up our hands, utter your own prayers to God. This is us lifting our concerns to the Lord. The Bible says, lift up your concerns to Him, your, your cares to Him, for He cares for you. He wants you to pray to Him. Lord, we lift up to you all our concerns. Lahat po na nakapagpabigat sa puso namin. Lord, as we worship ngayon, Panginoon, many of us, we're, we're trying. We want to look to you. But Lord, this, there's this thing that weighs us down. But Lord, as we continue worshiping, Lord, we, we want to focus on you alone. So ito po, lahat ng cares namin. And we declare, Lord, that whatever happens, ikaw yung bahala sa buhay namin. Ikaw ang Panginoon. You are powerful and you are willing. So Lord, here's all our concerns. But at the same time, Lord, we take up your yoke. We take up the rest that can only come from you. Lord, would you give your people right now the peace that surpasses all understanding that the Apostle Paul is saying in Philippians. Help us, Lord God, to not just understand your word, but reveal to us who you are and what you have done for us. Maraming maraming salamat, God. Today, we choose to worship in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Alright. Bago po tayo maupo, yan, batiin mo lang yung katabi mo, pupo tayo. Yan. Can we all sit down? Now we will proceed, we will continue on worshiping God, but this time through the giving of our tithes and offering. Let me read to you Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. Sa mga favorite verse ko. Sabi dito, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yeah, that's jump the screen. Can we read this all together? One, two, three, go. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, this verse illustrates a very a very important truth, a very important principle, which basically says, kung nasan daw yung mga bagay na mahalaga sa'yo, kung nasan daw yung iyong yaman, tingnan mo yung katabi mo, sabi mo sa kanya, nasan daw ang iyong yaman, naks naman, di ba? Nasan daw yung iyong treasure, naturally, dun daw susunod yung iyong puso. What's interesting is a couple of verses after that, the Lord Jesus made a contrast. Sabi ni Jesus, you cannot serve two masters. Either you will serve God or money. Can you imagine of all the things na contrast mo kay Lord pagdating sa rival sa puso ng tao, ang binigay ni Jesus Christ, God versus money. And hindi ito yung versus na tipong pagka nagkatapat, mag, mag-aaway. Eh, walang banali yung money. But how many of you know that that is true? That in our hearts, when it comes to the contest of our hearts, pagdating sa, sa kung ano yung nag-occupy ng puso natin, probably the greatest rival of God is yung resources. We all have resources. Resources are important. Money is important. But money can serve as a master or money can serve as a tool. Nung ginawa ni Jesus yung contrast ng God or money, one will serve as a master, one will serve as a tool. There is no other option. Let me give you an illustration. If God is the, if money is the master, then you will go to God and say, Lord, pay niya akong money. Tapos kapag ka meron kang money, you don't ask God kung saan mo spend yung money. Kasi money is the master and God is the tool. Parang pag sinasabi natin gano'n, pumapalag yung puso natin because we know that it's wrong. Tama ba? But God, if God is your master, then surely, in everything that we spend, not just in the giving of our tithes and offering, in everything, sa lahat po ng pinupuntaan ng pera natin, we ask Him. Because you are our master, Lord, where do you want me to spend the resources that is yours in the first place? Tama ba? Nag-iiba yung dynamics, kaya very important. Now, Again, going back to the verse that we read, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let me just tell you, God is not after the money. God is after your heart. But it remains to be true. Kung saan nandun yung treasure natin, dun sumusunod yung puso. So today, as we give our tithes and offering, please know that this is a training, this is a step of faith, this is between you and God. I know that God is after your heart because He loves you. Because if you think about it, if this is true, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, then you will read John 3.16 in a new perspective. Sabi sa John 3.16, favorite niya, di ba? I am the way. Hindi, mali pala, no? For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. God so loved the world that He gave what? His greatest treasure. Now, can you answer the question, na kanina yung ngayon yung puso ni Lord? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. No wonder God so loved the world. I hope that we give with a motivation of worship in response to what God has done. This is more than a duty. This is more than an assignment. This is not an obligation. Amen? Can we just pray right now, Lord, as we worship you through the giving of our tithes and offering. Lord, we want to express our wholehearted worship to you. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa ginawa mo. And Lord, sabi nga sa salita mo, He who supplies seed to the sower. So, at the end of the day, all of this comes from you. And Lord, you are our dad, you are our father, you are our 
Lord. And Lord, as a response, here we are. We want to worship you through the giving of our tithes and offering. Thank you, God, for this privilege. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Just a couple of reminders. This is how you can give. You can give online dun po sa ating Victory Laguna giving website, victorylaguna.org uh, slash give. And I would like to please make a pakiusap sa inyo that you upload the proof of transaction or email at kalamba at victory.org.ph. But many of us still prefer to give our tithes and offering through an envelope. So sa upuan nyo po meron, tapos yung ating offering box ay nasa labas dito sa left side. Please, just as a reminder for everyone, wag po natin iiwan yung ating tithes and offerings sa ating upuan at wag po natin ibibigay sa kahit na sino. Sa kahit na sino, wag po natin ibibigay. Labas po tayo doon at ihulog po natin yung tithes sa ating tithe box. Amen? Again, with that, can we all stand as we continue to worship God through the singing of songs? through the listening of the preaching of your word, pray that you speak to us. Holy Spirit, I know that you have a personal message to all of us, but at the same time, a message for us as a church family, as a church community. 
Salamat God. So today, we choose to focus on you. Lord, I pray that you would remove every distractions na meron po kami, both you external and you internal. And would you help us just to fix our eyes on you. Salamat po Panginoon for your grace. Today, we choose to worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Makakaupo na po tayo. Again, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the three people who said good morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 11 a.m. worship service. This is Victory Church, Kalamba. We are a church that exists to honor God and make disciples. If you notice right now, I'm wearing the official uniform of our kids' church. Palakpakan naman natin ang kids' church natin. Yan, maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng ating kids' volunteer. We just want to let everyone know that our church is a multi-generational church that is committed in reaching the next generation. And kasama po sa next generation na nire-reach po natin ay ating mga anak, yung kids' church. Ang kids' church po, lilinawin ko lang po sa ating lahat ay hindi po iwanan ng bata. Ang Kids Church po ay hindi daycare. Ang Kids Church po ay hindi Kidzuna. Ang atin pong mga ang atin pong mga volunteers ay committed to disciple the next generation, not to make bantay of them. Kasama naman po yung pagbabantay, pero ang puso po talaga ng mga Kids Church teacher is to disciple them, to partner with the parents in discipling the next generation. So please continue to pray for our kids' church teachers. And if you are a parent, and if you have a heart to, to volunteer sa atin pong kids' church, please do so. So iba sa inyo, iniisip, eh grabe, sa bahay na nga, dami kong alagaan sa ano pa. Eh, well, iba naman po, yes, kasama na pag-aalaga, pero the privilege of us, Imagine that, diba? the privilege of us discipling the next generation, imparting your life to them. I'm sure that the Lord will bless that. Diba? Lahat, ng, lahat ng ating ibibigay na sakripisyo para po i-disciple the next generation, I am sure eventually we will see the fruit. And because we believe in the next generation, I would, I would just like to share na soon we will be renovating po yung room 3 natin uh, para po mahiwalay na natin yung mga may anak na infant, sila na po yung maiiwan doon sa dating toddler's room. Tapos lahat po ng may toddlers pupunta na doon sa tunay na kidzuna. Hindi, biru, biru lang. Gagawin po natin yung room 3 natin na play area for toddlers na maglalagay po tayo ng TV doon na maririnig po yung nangyayari dito. So parents with toddlers, we want to make this place as, uh, as next generation friendly as possible. We want you to be able to worship with your kids. That's why we're doing that. If you want to take part with that, uh, pray to God on however you want to take part with that. And soon we will start that reno renovation several weeks from now. So, yung room 3 po natin makoconvert na sa toddler's area. Tapos yung ating toddler's area po dun sa likod, ano na, hindi na siya toddler's area. Para na lang siya sa mga may anak na one-year-old below tama no? one year old below yung yung mga baby para matahimik din po yung ano yung place na yun for them yan tapos dahil love talaga natin ng next generation and dami kong kwento sa inyo no um then meron po tayong series ngayon tayo pa ay nagtatapos na ng ating mini series na entitled burn brighter every year we take two weeks at least to talk about uh, campus ministry Dahil dito po sa church natin, we don't just have kids church, we also have every nation campus kung saan tayo po ay nilalagay natin talaga lahat ng resources natin, effort natin. We even have campus missionaries to reach all the 116 educational institution dito po sa city natin. 16 or 17 college campuses. Can you imagine? Ganun kadami po yung nire-reach natin dito. And right now, we have set foot dun sa mga area kung saan nandun po yung mga campuses na yun. All six hotspots, meron na po tayong campus missionaries and campus leaders na nagdi-disciple dun. 
ang prayer natin eventually masaturate lahat ng campuses, lahat ng high schools at colleges magkaroon tayo ng campus ministry. Yan yung ating desire. Teka, nasa series ako, no? napapunta na dun sa ano. Talaga, ito talaga kasi yung passion natin. Next generation. And because next generation is our passion, we have asked today to preach to us the word of God. Uh, one of our campus missionaries, our uh, one of our veteran, Knox veteran, campus missionaries, Uh, and we have here today si Miss Abby sa Avedra. Palakpakan naman natin si Abby. Let me introduce Abby to you. I know for many of you, hindi nyo na kailangan ng introduction pagdating kay Abby, but uh, I want to introduce her anyway. So Abby has been serving in campus ministry for more than 10 years. In fact, exactly 11 years. Ganong katagal na po siya nagsaserve sa campus ministry. Initially, sa ating church in Victory Los Baños, Tapos, she transitioned in serving in Victory Calamba at umabot rin siya ng one year na nag-serve dito as one of our campus missionaries. Then eventually, she was sent to the Every Nation Campus National Office to serve all campus missionaries dun sa atin pong buong region. Pag sinabi pong region, yung buong uh, Every Nation Philippines. Sa Every Nation po, meron po tayong tatlong church, Victory, Rain, at Life. Diba, victorious reigning in life. Yun po yung uh, uh, tatlong church po natin sa, sa every nation. At si Abby ay part ng team na nagsaserve sa lahat ng campus missionaries. More than 400 campus missionaries yung sinaserve po nila. So today, we are excited to hear the word of God from her. By the way, Abby is already married kay Roel. Roel preached kahapon and he will preach mamaya sa 1pm service natin. Uh, at namis lang talaga namin sila. Si Abby was a clo- uh, is a close friend to the staff and I'm excited to hear the word of God from her. So 11am service. That's all. Give a warm Victory Calamba Church welcome to Abby Saavedra. Meron ba? Ayan, naririnig ako. Ayan, mag, mag-set up lang po ako. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Wow, napaka-servant leader naman po talaga ni Pastor Zahid. Pastor Zahid, maraming salamat po. Uh, no, uh, but really, I, I just want to honor before you, Pastor Jared. Uh, nung nasa Los Banos pa lang ako, totoo to, Pastor Jared, I tell to uh, Pastor Zorin at Trish na I look up to you. You're really a great leader. And uh, pag nasa Manila, tapos magkikita-kita kami na Pastor Jared. Alam niyo po ba, ang heart po talaga niya ay kayo. Um, pag makikita kami, tapos tatanungin niya, Abby, anong pwedeng magawa para sa Kalamba? Abby, ano yung mga resources na para sa Kalamba? Mahal na mahal po kayo ni Pastor Jared. In fact, kung bubuksan niyo po yung puso niya ngayon, mga pangalan niyo po ang nakasulat dyan. So, Pastor Jared, <laughs> wag na buksan kasi nakaisab. So, ayan. Um, thank you, Pastor Jared. It's really a privilege to uh, stand here in front of Uh, our church and preach the word of the uh, the word of God uh, this morning. Um, so thank you, Pastor Jared. Uh, I also want to honor our campus missionaries, si Nazari, Lena, namis ko kayong katrabaho, si Job, Jamie, and so. Um, really, really uh, glad to serve with them. Sila po ay mga fellow campus missionaries na. Binigay talaga nila yung buhay nila para sa campus for the sake of the gospel dito sa Kalamba. So palapakan naman po natin ang ating mga campus missionaries. So again po, um, I'm, I am, um, I'm married uh, to Ruel. He's also a campus missionary. Uh, sabi po ni uh, Pastor Jared, uh, uh, I'm a campus missionary for 11 years already. Si Ruel po for five years. Uh, kami na na Pastor Jared, teammates kami sa 9am service ng Kalamba. Tapos we were recalling last night, wala pang one year pala nung nakaalala kami ng Kalamba. <laughs> Diyan po kami nakatira sa Remedios, um, sa Calle Decente, baka meron po wala kaming kapitbahay dito. Uh, we left uh, and transitioned to Manila and answer um, another expression of God's call in campus ministry, uh, September 11, 9-11. So wala pa talagang, 11 months pa lang, Pastor Jared. Um, so again, yes, we are serving in the, hindi lang gumagalapas, sunod na lang ako. We're serving in the region, 
Ayan si Ruel, kaya siya wala ngayon kasi nag-preach po ka siya kanina sa 9 a.m. service natin sa Victory Tap. Ayan, um, but uh, he's traveling now. Lord, pray for uh, safety and protection for him. Mag-preach po siya sa 1 p.m. service natin dito sa Kalamba mamaya. So, um, uh, serving in the region, ganito po tayo kadami. Sa victory pa lang, sabi ni Pastor Jared kanina, we are uh, now, every nation churches in the Philippines is now victory reign at life. So meron po tayong uh, life San Mateo, life Novaliches, tapos isa pong church ng reign. Lahat po yun kasama ng victory under every nation. And, um, Lagi po nating sinasabi, lagi niyo pong maririnig yan dito na we believe in the next generation. We invest because we see their potential to lead and make a change. Not just in their campus, but in our nations and in the world. Tignan niyo nga kung meron kayong mga katabing uh, estudyante. You can, uh, lahat ng mga estudyante dito, pwede bang taas niyo ang inyong mga kamay? Ayan, uh, we have a number of students in our uh, 11 a.m. service. Ayan, so... Um, Ngayon, again, palagi niyong maririnig yan sa amin. Pag nag-visit kayo ng mga Victory Churches, maririnig niyan pa ulit-ulit na we love the next generation. But in this particular series, um, we are concluding and uh, we're gonna uh, talk about um, the, 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 the next generation and the older generation working together hand-in-hand hand, okay, to fulfill the mission of God. As they work together, that sparks a flame makes it like a wildfire and burn brighter in this dark world. So yun po yung um, titignan natin, especially sa preaching ngayong umaga. Recently, um, I, I read an article, hindi ulit gumagana pa, sundan na lang po, I, I read an article um, in the New York Times, um, tapos, Nahook ako kasi yung title niya, Japan's Business Owners Can't Find Successors. This man is giving his away. Baka po may gustong magmana. <laughs> kasi nagahanap siya ng tagapagmana dun sa business niya. He has a logistics uh, business in uh, Hokkaido. So, sa part na snowy area. So, thriving yung business niya kasi sobrang kailangan ng ano uh, logistics doon para makapag uh, travel travel at makapag deliver okay he's 73 years old tapos sabi niya he felt too old to carry on but quitting is not an option however wala pong may gusto sa mga employees niya yung employees niya by the way this article is just January 2023 Okay, by the New York Times. So, yung mga employees niya, nasa 50 to 60 years old na rin. Tapos, walang may gusto mag-inherit. Even yung mga anak niya. Walang may gusto mag-inherit. Um, tapos, uh, I also learned na, ano pala siya, uh, problem na siya sa Japan ngayon. Na yung mga thriving businesses sa Japan, Sobrang gagaling, pero walang nag inherit walang, nag, walang nagtutuloy. Baka po meron dito, Pastor Jared, sa 11 a.m. Uh, 11 a.m. service natin sa Kalamba. Um, so, the fact na ganun yung nangyayari, meron ng actually mga companies na ang tanging ano, ang tanging ginagawa nila is that they would um, help itong mga businesses na to to find a buyer or find a successor. So, grabe na no, may may ganung kumpanya. And so si uh, Mr. Yokoyama, nag-ask siya ng help sa isang company na ito para matulungan siya kung sino ba yung susunod. Tapos ang uh, nilabas niyang ad, young and ready to work. Sabi niya kahit walang experience, basta young and ready to work. Yeah, meron ba dito yung katabi mo ba mukhang papasa, young and ready to work. And in the last part, sabi niya, there's a lot of pressure when I came here. I was prepared to do this for the rest of my life. Um, dahil pinost na yung ad na young and ready to work, may isang nag-apply, pero even siya at saka yung mga employees niya, they are not fully convinced kung kaya ba na talaga niyang ituloy yung business. We don't know anong reason kung bakit walang may gusto. Kahit anak niya, no? Walang may gustong uh, kunin yung business nila. We don't know. Probably nakakapagod. Probably hindi sila interesado. 
uh, dito sa logistics business na to. But when it comes to the business of advancing the kingdom of God, my question now here is, is it really important to find a successor? Importante ba na merong susunod sa ginagawa natin para sa Panginoon? Also, is it possible for the experienced generation or the older generation and the younger or the emerging generation to work hand in hand to fulfill God's mission? That's what we're gonna, uh, we're gonna look at this uh, morning. So, can I invite everyone to stand? And we're gonna read from Second Kings chapter two. I'm gonna read from my physical Bible. 2 Kings chapter 2. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, please stay here for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets were, who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said for the third time, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Imagine the Jordan River in front of them. Verse 8, Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, Elijah replied, you have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses and fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into pieces. In, and he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Last verse. Now when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho saw him opposite them, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, anoint the preaching of your word. Speak to us directly, Lord. Speak to us. Use me as your mouthpiece to preach your word powerfully into the hearts of your people here in the 11 a.m. Victory Columbat service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now uh, sit down. Thank you for standing that long. <laughs> Pero masayang basahin yung word ni God. Amen? Um... Let's just, uh, I just want to uh, give you a short uh, background. Ano ba yung binasa natin? Yung 2 Kings, chapter 2, part siya. Siyempre, ng 2 Kings na book. Pero bago mag 2 Kings, may 1 Kings. Actually, it's uh, originally written as one book lang. Um, 
uh, sinusundan niya ang libro ng 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. Kung maalala niya si King David who killed Goliath and then David, uh, after David's reign, it's Solomon. After ni Solomon, si, yung anak ni Solomon, si King Rehoboam. But he uh, ruled brutally and so because of that, nag-revolt yung mga Israelites na hati ang kingdom sa north and south. Sa northern kingdom, meron pong 10 tribes, that's the Israel, and then na- naiwan lang kay Rehoboam yung two tribes sa south um, called Judah. Um, this was a, a time. So, sinulat to para sa mga Israelites. Okay, hindi tayo Israelites. Baka nagulat ka. <laughs> Pero uh, alam ko meron tayong matututunan ngayon dito uh, as we hear the word. So, ang nangyayari po ng time na ito, sobrang gulo po sa Israel. Kings were so wicked. They were actually... Um, forcing the people and uh, encouraging the people to worship a pagan god. Okay? Yung Diyos Diyosa. Maraming po silang mga Diyos Diyosa na isa sa Diyos Diyosa na to nag-aalay sila ng bata. Pinapatay nila yung bata. Tapos inaalay nila. Tapos it was a corrupt uh, nation. Uh, evil was there left and right. Kahit saan ka tumingin. Uh, sobrang evil nang nangyayari. But God's faithfulness to His people is shown through prophets, uh, yung character nga natin ngayon, si Elijah at Elisha, um, to continue to preach to the people that, hey, turn to me. I am the one true God who can save you. Now, para lang makilala natin si na Elijah at Elisha, alam ko medyo para nakakarito, Elijah, Elisha. Si, si Elijah, okay, siya po yung unang character. He's a prophet. Bigla na lang po siyang lumitaw sa 1 Kings chapter 17. Basahin niyo po ang inyong Bible pag uwi. Tignan niyo ang kanyang story. Um, he is a prophet. He predicted a drought. Um, uh, El Nino. Tama no? Kapag drought. El Nino. Yeah. Walang ano. Walang tubig. Ganyan. Walang ulan. For three years because of the consequences of the sins of Israel. He represented God in a showdown against 850 priests. Okay? So, sabi niya doon sa priest, sige, patunayan natin kung sino talaga yung totoong Panginoon. Kung yang sinasamba niyo ngayon o itong Panginoon na tinatawag ko. Nag-set uh, up sila ng dalawang bull. Tigisa sila. Tapos sabi niya, Kung sino ang uh, mag-respond in, uh, in a fire, yun ang totoong Panginoon. 850 priests prayed all day, all night. Walang sagot si Baal. Here comes Elijah. Pagka-pray niya, umapoy yung offering niya. A showdown. <laughs> Dramatic one. He anoints Elijah. Now here comes Elijah. Elijah, he's a prophet. Pero bago siya maging prophet, um, sorry, babalikan ko lang kay Elijah. Si Elijah, marami pang mga ganap sa buhay niya. Tapos, may, ang galing ng mga ginagawa ni Lord sa buhay niya. Pero may time na natakot din siya kasi gusto siyang ipapatay ng queen. So, sabi niya, Lord, ako na lang uh, natitirang uh, sumasamba sa'yo. But that's not true. Sabi ni Lord kay Elijah, Elijah, tumigil ka dyan. <laughs> Meron pang 7,000 people who did not who, 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 who did not bow down to Baal. Ako pa rin ang Panginoon. Anoint Hazael, anoint Jesu, anoint Elisha. So here comes Elisha. Elisha was actually a, a farmer. Okay? At hindi lang siya basta farmer, mayaman po siyang farmer. Meron siyang 12 oxen. So nung uh, pinuntahan siya ni Elisha, ayan, so yun yung itsura. Uh, si Elisha, meron po siyang cloak or yung kung sa atin, uh, balabal. Yan. So, uh, it's a symbol of authority. So, um, nung sinabi ni Lord kay Elijah na anoint Elisha, um, binigay niya yung cloak niya kay Elisha. Uh, meaning that Elisha will be his successor. Okay? So, nung ginawa niya yun, si Elisha, um, nagpaalam sa mga magulang niya, tapos yung oxen niya, yung 12 oxen niya, pinaluto niya, nagpapiesta. Um... Uh, rejoicing with the call of God in his life. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at the lessons we can see from uh, the life of Elijah and Elisha. At na-reveal ko na yung una, pursue relational connection. Can you repeat that? Pursue relational connection. Uh, in the first verse, now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their, their way uh, from Gilgal. Um, 
uh, there was already a presumption na meron ng prophetic uh, message na si Elijah po ay kukunin na ng Panginoon. So alam ito mismo ni Elijah, grabe no, ano kayong pakiramdam nun? Alam mismo ni Elijah, alam din ni Elisha na kukunin na si Elijah, alam din ng mga sons of prophets. Yung sons of prophets, they are a group of discipled prophets. Okay, so para lang alam natin. And so, um, yung pagpunta ni Elijah sa mga um, lugar na to, yung Bethel, Jericho, Jordan, it's as if visiting them for the last time and encouraging them of their faith in the Lord. And so, um, si Elijah, kung napansin nyo kanina nang binabasa natin, paulit-ulit yung sinasabi kay Elisha, huwag ka sumama, dito ka na lang. Um, Hayaan mo ako kasi pupunta ako sa lugar na to. Pero, ano yung nakita natin? Tatlong beses din, um, persistent si Elisha. Sabi niya, hindi. Hasama ako sa iyo as surely as the Lord lives and surely as you live, sasama ako sa iyo. Ngayon, si Elijah, hindi ito yung um, ayaw na talagang kasama si Elisha. But the reason why... Um, He doesn't want Elisha to come to him. Kasi nung, panahon, nung Bible times po, si God, when he, revealed, uh, when he reveals himself to people, sa sobrang glorious niya, sa sobrang ho- holy niya, hindi po kinakain ng mga tao. Ikamamatay po ng mga tao. And so si Elijah, alam ni Elijah na uh, kukunin na siya ni Lord, pero hindi niya alam kung paano. He just wants to save Elisha kasi baka ikamatay ni Elisha pag nakita niya. Pero anong sabi ni Elisha? Hindi. Sasama ako sa iyo kahit ikamatay ko pa to. I will go with you. I will not leave you. What can we see here? We can see here that their connection was not transactional but relational. Their connection was not transactional but relational. Um, actually, wala pong minention sa Bible kung ano talaga yung mga adventures nila together. But in these verses, magkakaroon tayo ng clue. Kasi sabi sa 1 Kings 19.21, uh, Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. So ito yung time na yung binigay ni Elijah, yung cloak niya, uh, yung picture kanina. Sabi doon, assisted him. So sumama na agad si Elijah kay Elijah. Became his Kumbaga, protege, yan, assistant, servant. In uh, chapter 3 of 2 Kings, uh, verse 11, it says here, uh, who poured out water on the hands of Elijah. Ang ibig sabihin po nung poured water on the hands of Elijah, he served Elijah in his old age. So, imagine, inabutan talaga niya na matanda na rin, matanda na rin si Elijah. So, masasabi natin na marami silang pinagdaanan. Sa hirap at ginawa, kumbaga. Marami silang pinagdaanan. And um, there's just one observation in our present time. It's actually easy, both have for the old generation and the next generation or the young generation to dismiss each other. Kasi magkakaiba ng... Hilig ng gusto, ng trip, magkaiba ng genre ng music, magkaiba ng fashion. Di ba? Magkaiba kung paano mag-isip, strategies. Um, I don't know if uh, you saw this, nag-viral po ito recently. Sino dito mahilig sa yogurt? Mahilig ako sa yogurt. Ayan. Um, uh, yung anak niya, nagsa-celebrate lang sila ng birthday ng ate niya daw. Tapos uh, dessert nila, yaw-yaw, o oh, nag-promote pa, uh, na yogurt. Ang yogurt kasi, mukha siyang ice cream pero maasim siya. So nung binigay niya sa tatay niya, sabi ng tatay, tapos sakto daw na picturean talaga nila, sabi niya, ano ba to panis? Sabi niya, tapos sabi ng anak niya, ha ha, dapat talaga hiwalay Facebook niyo eh. <laughs> you know what, um... When the next generation, nung mga, yung mga kabataan, nung nalaman po nila na yung mga tito at tita at nanay at tatay nila nasa Facebook na, lumipat sila sa Instagram. Oh, alam niyo ba yun? <laughs> Tapos nung mga nagsisilipatan ngayon yung mga nanay, tatay at tito at tita sa Instagram, lumipat sila sa threads. Oh, alam niyo ba yung threads? Um, it's easy to dismiss one another, but I want you to know that genuine relationship is possible between generations. We see that in the life of Elijah and Elisha. And I'm just grateful for the people God placed in my life, uh, the Elijahs in my life. First, it's um, 
Pastor John and Ate Trish. Uh, uh, estudyante pa lang ako, kuya at ate ko na sila. Um, alam nila yung... <laughs> Parang tingin ko kaya nilang sumulat ng uh, buhay ko. Uh, I really appreciate them. Nung naging uh, kami ni Roel, uh, we're, we're really good friends with them. We learned so much values of the family. Next generation, sa kanila ko nakuha yung heart sa next generation. Sila yung uh, matron of honor and best man namin sa kasal namin. Next, it's Pastor Earl and Ate Carlen. If you know Pastor Earl and Ate Carlin, si Pastor Earl nung single pa lang ako, ano yan, sobrang ako na-appreciate yan. Tawagin ako na, Abby, may bagong bukas na restaurant dun sa Kalamba. Kain tayo. O kaya, pagluluto niya ako, Abby, dito tayo sa bahay. May, nagluto ako ng laksa. Si Pastor Earl po, he's one of the uh, most generous and humble person that I know. Um, Appreciate ko yung humility niya. Magka-team din kami sa 9am service din. Nasa Los Banyos pa ako. Lapit yan sa akin. Abi, magpa-practicean kita sa preaching ko. O, ano, ano sa tingin mo? Anong mga suggestion mo? That kind of humility. Parang ako, kayo po yung pastor. Sa akin po kayo nagtatanong. Pero that kind of humility. I appreciate that. Uh, kaya yan, tinan nyo. Nung kinasal kami, pinapakain pa rin kami ni, kami ni Roel. Uh, another Elijah in my life is Ate Cathy. Ate Cathy is uh, the wife of Bishop Gilbert Foliente. Um, I really appreciate her during the time na there was this heavy um, moment in my life, in our, in our family. Natawag pa yan sa akin kahit in, late night just to pray for me and encourage me. Uh, next week, yan, uh, nag-set ako ng mentoring ulit kay Ate Cathy, Papa. Tulong ako how to be uh, a best wife to <laughs> well. Um, also, I hope uh, you won't get out of this church na wala kang Elijah sa buhay mo. Kahit may victory group ka, possible na wala kang Elijah kung hindi mo ino-open up yung buhay mo at hindi mo sila inaalaw na mag-speak sa life mo. Kahit may victory group ka. So I want you to know that you won't let your life be led by yung buhay mo lang. <laughs> Kasi you don't need to live this life alone. Find an Elijah if you, if you don't have one. Also, I, uh, I appreciate the Lord for giving me the privilege to um, walk with the Elijah naman in my life. Kasi at some point, Elijah rin ako to someone younger than me. So this is Yuan. She's part of my leadership group nung estudyante pa lang siya. Um, so we've been through a lot together. There, were, there was also a time to, pinagkukwento ko namin, pero di na namin maalala, na offend siya sa akin. <laughs> Niisip namin, ano nga nangyari? Na? Pero she had that courage to talk to me and tell me this is, this is what happened. And I said sorry to her. Um, yung gano'n, na kaya kang kausapin kahit mas bata sa'yo. Um, ngayon, kami, uh, nung kinasal sila ng husband niya, kami ni Ruel ang matron of honor nila at best man. Uh, that's you. And now she's fulfilling the call of God, serving our every nation, uh, yung mga world missionaries natin. Yun naman po yung work niya, serving them um, in every nation. Next, si Kim. Kim, uh, I, I met Kim uh, 2011 when she was a freshman in UP Los Baños. Pinagpaalam ko po sa kanya if I can share her story to you. Um, started doing one-to-one. However, um, uh, may mga nangyari sa life niya. Um, she got into an early pregnancy. Hindi niya natapos yung pag-aaral niya. Pre-pandemic. We were still... Uh, uh, talking to each other, nagsa-chat siya, nasa Cavite siya, ate, may church ba dito? So, ikokanik ko siya doon. Um, Pre-pandemic, sabi niya, ate, ikakasal na kami. We heard the Lord and we want to follow Him and we want to make this right. Tapos, in-invite niya ako sa wedding niya. What a sight to see and walk with them. Lastly, si Pat. Um, si Pat, kaka-graduate na lang po nung isang linggo. She's a magna cum laude graduate. BS Tourism in STI Fort when I was serving at Victory Fort in 2019. Pero nung pandemic, nag-message din kami na nag-video call pa kami niyan. Ate, pag-pray mo ko, kasama ko sa 10 days online. Ate, pag-pray mo ko. Ano, ito yung mga answered prayers Lord. What a privilege to walk with an Elijah. If you're an Elijah, Someone believed in you. And so I hope that you would be an Elijah to an Elisha. Sana hindi ka papayag na wala ka rin tinutulungan na mas bata sa'yo. Na wala kang tinutulungan, estudyante. 
um, ngayon, I hope and I pray that our uh, connections between generations is not just transactional. Yung parang matapos ang yung one-to-one -one or may masend lang sa Victory Weekend, sana hindi ganun. Alam ko hindi tayo ganun. Just like Elijah and Elisha, it's possible for both generations to work hand in hand. Let's walk with each other. Let's encourage one another. Let's build each other up. Sinabi yun sa ano, uh, John 13, a new commandment I give to you, love one another. Thessalonians, encourage one another. Genuine relationships is possible between generations. Pursue relational connection. Next, what, what are we gonna learn? Uh, what do we learn from Elijah and Elisha? Desire for a double portion. Say double portion. Yung pong double portion, yung concept po ng double portion, uh, makikita niyo po ito sa Law ni Moses, sa Deuteronomy chapter, uh, is it there? 21, verse 17. Um, sabi doon, but he shall acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the unloved, by giving him a double portion of all that he has. For he is the first fruits of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Meron pong mga privilege ang mga panganay. Panganay na lalaki. Sinong panganay ako? Panganay ako. Uh, in the Bible times, ito yung privilege nila. Um, they are entitled for um, a double portion of the inheritance of their father. For example, meron pong tatlong daang ektarya ng lupa. Tapos kung yung tatay ay may dalawang anak, ang gagawin niya, hahatiin niya sa tatlo. Okay? Yung 300 hectares. So, tigo 100 yon. Galing natin sa math. Tapos, Yung dalawang 100, ibibigay niya dun sa firstborn. Yung natitirang 100, yun yung sa isa niya pang anak. That's uh, the double portion. Uh, that's uh, the privilege of uh, uh, na isang panganay. Balikan lang natin. Um, in verse 7, 50 men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Uh, then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water. And the water was parted to the one side and to the other till the two of them could go over on dry ground. Verse 9, when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. The truth is, Elisha saw the value of what Elijah was doing. Mahirap. Nakakapagod. But Elisha saw the value. And so when Elisha asked for the double portion, hindi po siya humihingi ng inheritance actually na um, kayamanan. Kasi di ba, sabi ko kanina, si Elisha ay mayaman, di ba? Nagpapiesta nga siya eh. Pero what he was asking here was, the, the call was so great. I can't do this alone. The Spirit of the Lord is on you. I want that kind of spirit to work also in me because I want to continue what you have started. Give me a double portion of your spirit. That is what um, Elisha was asking. With this, Elisha was asking for Elijah to consider him as his spiritual son. Hindi man sila magkadugo. Pero with this question of Elisha, he was actually asking Elijah, consider me as your spiritual son. And bless me with a double portion of your spirit so that I can continue what the Lord has called us to do. For all of us who are here, when you see a student in the campus, what do you see in them? What do you see in them? Can you consider them? as your spiritual sons and daughters? Would you consider them as your spiritual sons and daughters? Because they have the potential. They are leaders. God calls them to continue what we have started. Yung ginawa ni Elisha, it's actually a counter-cultural to the young people nowadays who view the older generation as badui, hindi nag innovate outdated. 
Alam niyo ba may um, may nauso na phrase? Okay, boomer. Ano niyo ba yun? Para sa mga baby boomers. It's actually, um, what that actually means was, I will prove you wrong. Yun po yung heart nung mga young generation ngayon sa older generation. We will prove you wrong kasi mas magaling kami sa inyo. Pero si Elisha, he asked with a different spirit, not out of arrogance, but because he saw the value of the call of God, he wants to continue it. For the Elishas in this place, 29 years old and younger. Meron ba? 29 years old and younger? Mga Elisha, hindi na ako kasama dyan eh. I'm 31, I'm turning 32 next month. Para sa mga Elisha, I urge you to desire a double portion. If you desire a double portion, the Lord will grant it. Because He is a good Father who grants to His children, whatever we ask according to His name. If you're an Elisha, ask for a double portion. The Lord will grant it. Balik lang po ako dito sa verse 9. When they had crossed Elijah, uh, when they had crossed Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. Imagine this with a sacred moment. Um, di ba sabi ko nga, parang hindi na sila nag-uusap kasi dramatic tong part na to eh, na um, kukunin si Elijah until Elijah broke the silence and asked Elisha, what do you need? Bago ko lumisan, anong pwede kong gawin para sa'yo? The, the, the older generation, Elijah, initiated a conversation and asked Elisha, heard him out and say, anong pwede kong gawin para sa'yo? Again, this is actually um, a counterculture ngayon kasi common naman po sa older generation to dismiss then yung voice ng next generation. Hmm, bakit ba ganyan yung mga kabataan ngayon? Panahon naman namin, di naman ganyan. Bakit ganyan mag -isip? Bata ka pa, di mo pa yan may intindihan. I received that when I was a student. May gatas ka pa sa labi. Marami ka pang kakaining bigas. Hindi mo nga masaing eh. For the Elijahs in this place, 30s and up. Yan, kasama na ako doon. For the Elijahs in this place, desire for a double portion. Desire for a double portion for the next generation. When you see the students, what do you do with them? Do you bless them? Do you speak life to them? Do you pray for them? I hope that we do. Students nowadays, they don't believe in themselves. They were so much affected with the people around them and with the opinions of the people around them. And they looked down to themselves. Would you speak life to the students so that they would see that they have a big call from a great big God? Elijah's desire for a double portion for the next generation. Uh, in verse 10, uh, ito yung reply ni Elijah. You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. So sinasabi dito ni Elijah na you have asked a hard, you have asked a hard thing um, because Elijah was actually um, recognizing na you're my spiritual son, I am for you, pero this is the will of the Lord. 
si Lord ang kayang mag-grant ng request mo. And so, paano natin malaman kung mag- nag-grant ni Lord yung request mo? Ito, kung makita mo ko kung paano kukunin ng Panginoon, that means the Lord has granted your request. Pero kung hindi mo ko makita, ibig sabihin, it shall not be so. Um, lastly, last lesson that we can learn from Elijah and Elisha is to fulfill God's mission. Fulfill God's mission. In verse 11, and as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of the fire separated out of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. This is actually um, a proof na hindi po selfishness and arrogance yung pag-ask ni Elisha ng double portion. Bakit? Yung pag niya ng clothes niya, it's a symbol of mourning and deep grieving. Sobrang bigat ng, ng kalooban niya na wala na si Elijah sa buhay niya. And because Elisha saw, or I mean, God showed Elisha kung paano niya kinuha si Elijah. Anong ibig sabihin nun? The Lord granted the willingness and the heart of Elisha to continue, to carry on the responsibility started by Elijah. Verse 13. And he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other. And Elisha, just like what Elijah did nung una, naalala nyo nung silang dalawin tumawid, Elijah went over. Um, so verse 13 Yung cloak daw ni Elijah na laglag, na iwan nung kinuha siya ni Lord. So verse 14, what did Elisha do? Elisha took the cloak. It's a symbol of he's really taking now the full responsibility of Elijah's ministry. Kasi pwede naman yung iwan eh. Pero di ba yung cloak, sabi natin kanina, it's a symbol of authority. Okay, um, coming from Elijah. So he took the cloak, meaning I am taking the responsibility. Mahirap. Nakakatakot. But I'm gonna do this anyway. In verse 15, Now when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho saw him opposite them, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him. And bow to the ground before him. What happened here? The people now recognized that it is now Elisha's time to fulfill God's mission, which Elijah has started. The people recognized. Do we recognize that when we see students? Do we recognize that in them? Alam nyo kapag uh, inaral nyo pa, yung buhay ni Elijah at ni Elisha. Si Elijah, during his ministry time, he was able to, through him, God uh, um, worked powerfully in the lives of the people. Uh, he made seven miracles nung panahon niya. Nung panahon ni Elisha, pag binasa niyo, 14 miracles. Doble. <laughs> Literal na dinoble ng Panginoon. Bakit? Because God's vision place in our hearts is so big that it will outlive us. Sobrang laki po ng mission ng Panginoon na hindi po kakayanin ng taon na ilalagi natin dito sa mundo. It will actually outlive us. But what's encouraging here is that we can continue. If we find Elisha's, if we, if we won't stop finding Elisha's, we can continue. God's vision placed in our hearts is so big that it will outlive us. Katulad po nang nangyari kay Elijah. Si Elijah, nung kinuha po siya ng Panginoon, hindi pa naman united yung kingdoms eh. 
Ang dami pa rin wicked kings. Basahin niyo, sobrang gulo. Pero kinuha na siya ni Lord. Pero sino nagpatuloy? Si Elisha. From seven miracles, 14 miracles. In Victory Calamba, uh, when, when I was still here, uh, magkasama po kami ni Zari sa hotspot ng parian. Ang tawag natin sa atin, Jay Walkers. <laughs> well, Jesus Walkers. Crossing kasi. Crossing parian. So, yan. Uh, pinag-pray namin yan ni Zari. Um, STI, yung PWU, yung mga campuses uh, papunta sa SM. Pero during that time, last year kasi, mostly online pa po yung mga ano, classes. Diba? Unlike now, na bali ka na talaga. So, nagpapray kami ni Zari, ano kayong pwedeng gawin? Tapos si Cha, dinamay namin kasi si Cha, dati siya nagtatrabaho sa STI. So, uh, Lord, help us, give us ideas. What do we do? How do we reach the students here? Weeks ago, this happened. We just had a recollection in STI College. Can we give God a round of applause? This happened, pero wala na po ako dito. Uh, we were already serving in Manila. But what's my point here? The mission of God continues even if we're not here anymore. The question is, how are we gonna be good stewards of that calling? Will we find Elishas who will continue the mission of God to fulfill the mission of God? Ang daming magagandang nangyayari ito sa Victory Calamba. Pastor Jared, doon nandito kami. Nagpipray tayo ng group. Kasi uh, uh, September pala, 2021, nandito ako, uh, nagsisimula pa lang ulit tayo mag-onsite noon, di ba? Kasi talagang pandemic, mga nakamasks pa yung mga tao, may pa-QR, QR code pa tayo, uh, health check, ganyan. Hanggang sa dumami ng dumami, we, were, we continue to pray. Ngayon, may 4 p.m. Saturday service na tayo. Diba? God continues. His mission is so big that it will actually outlive us. The map that I showed to you earlier, this is what we are, uh, where we are serving right now. Kung makikita nyo, ang dami na natin, we are in 120 plus locations. 19 locations in Metro Manila and the rest are in the pro- Kalat po sa probinsya. Yan, meron tayo sa Palawan, Zamboanga, Lawag. The next picture shows the campuses that we are yet to reach for the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The question is, will you take part in this calling? Will you have that willingness and heart to take part in what God is doing in our nation? Some of our prayers, our faith goals, pwede hindi natin makita, pwede hindi natin ma-experience. Um, Kwento ko lang, uh, in one of our uh, leaders' meeting in the movement, I'm not sure, Pastor Jared, kung anong year to, pero we received a prophetic message from one of uh, uh, the prophet in our movement. Sabi niya, magiging first world country daw ang Pilipinas. Sabi ko kay Rowell, hindi to pa kaya tayo pag nakita natin yun? Dito pa kaya tayo pag nangyari yun. But it doesn't matter. The, the, what matters is our willingness to work hand in hand. Old generation and next generation. Si Elijah at Elijah, nakita nila pareho yung value nung ginagawa ni Lord sa buhay natin. They answered the call took the responsibility, kahit mahirap, kahit ma-reject sila, kahit malapit na silang patayin ng, ng queen, ni Queen Jezebel during that time. They answer the call. They build relationships with, with each other because they know kailangan nilang mag-work together. Elisha asked for a double portion because he knows he cannot do this alone, but this can only be done by the might of our Lord Jesus Christ. Last point I want to leave with you. God works through the older generation and gives a double portion of His Spirit 
to the next generation in order to fulfill His mission. Will you take part, no matter what age you are right now, will you take part in this calling? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, to be used by you. You have given us a larger purpose. Pwede naman na basta mo na kami si Nave when you died on the cross. And yet, you've given us a purpose. You've invited us to be part of your mission. Na minsan nakakagulo pa kami. But Lord, help us. As Elijah's and Elisha's, help us, Lord, to work together hand in hand to fulfill your mission that you have given to us. Some of our prayers will be answered in our lifetime. Yung iba, hindi. Marami ado na hindi. Here we are, Lord. Use us. Use us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Abby. Let's all stand. Every generation. Yan o, tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Elisha o Elijah. O, exciting. All of us. Can you imagine that? A multi-generational church walking hand in hand. I realize yung statement na burn brighter, it's both a description and a challenge. A description because that is what will happen if we answer the call of God all together, all of us, parents, children, lolo, lola, lahat tayo, we walk hand in hand, believing God for the next generation. Yan yung mangyayari. But at the same time, we recognize na maraming, there are a lot of things that can divide us generationally. That's why it's also a challenge. Would you, di ba? believe in the destiny of the next generation? Would you not let the reasons that divides us uh, prevail and instead continue to believe God and His Word that He will be able to fulfill His mission through us in every generation? So as we end this service, can we just pray, Lord, maraming salamat po for calling us. Every generation, tinawag mo po kami, Lord, to advance your mission. And sabi nga ni Abby kanina, not everything we will see in this lifetime, but surely, surely, alam naman na po, po namin yung ending, panalo din po kami, panalo ka. Kasi sabi ni Jesus 2,000 years ago, it is finished. Lord, as we go home, may we have that perspective always, the 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 eye for the next generation. Makita namin yung next generation as uh, as bearer of hope. Alam ko, Panginoon, the, the world will portray yung divide dun sa mga generations, but Lord, help us as your sons and daughters to see the hope, the potential, the destiny of the next generation. Thank you, God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you, give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. That's it, Victory Church Kalamba. See you next week. We are now sent. Go and make disciples.